I've also done a video, put it up on YouTube. Um, it's, it's only 15 minutes. It's a two parter because YouTube doesn't take things more than 10 minutes because I don't have an account <laughs> that does that yet. So um, I have a two parter. So if you miss something here or don't want to look at this video, I've got that one on also. Okay, so again, you're going to want to tell your students, put your cursor inside the zoom area. You'll see the mic. You'll see a video camera. That's where you can adjust your settings so that you can make sure you can hear me. And if you want to speak, that you can speak. Then tell them to hit the participants. You'll have a thing that says more. I believe that's what participants have. You hit the more, you see the participants in chat. Now what you can do in chat is you can say, what I tell my, um, what I told everybody is, I, at the very beginning of all of this, when you first are with your students, set up your Zoom etiquette. Go look, in my class, you're gonna come into the class and gonna have everybody muted. Please do not unmute yourself. Or you can keep people unmuted and just say, please, you know, keep the environment quiet, whatever. It's up to you. I always mute my people. I make sure they're always muted. Now me, as the uh, session leader, I literally have a, an <clears throat> I literally have something where when you guys come on, I can, um, I can mute everybody and not allow them to mute themselves, to unmute themselves. And that's what I do because I want to have control over this because sometimes you have naughty students that like to, <laughs> you're mischievous and you just want to make sure nothing, where you have to, um, do so how do you mute them? How, how do you mute them? Okay. You can't do that right now because ah. right I have you guys as participants. Now you can mute yourself, but you don't have those settings. So um, on the video that I made, I sh actually can show you how to do that. I wonder if I could actually show you that. Um, I might try that in a little bit to show you that. I'll try to run a video and share my screen so you can see it. So you can see what it is to be the leader and do these things. Um, but right now I'm just going to go over it, but then I'll try to see if I can show you it now. So you won't be able to do that, but I do want, by the time we leave, I want you to see that. So I'm going to, I'm going to do my, see if I can do some magic. Um, so the other thing is on the controls down at the bottom, like I said, you've got like, tell your students to do the chat. Um, you could have it to where every session that you're in. This is when you actually make the meeting that it records automatically. If you don't do that option, then you know, you'd have to, as the leader, you'd have to go down at the bottom and there's a thing that will tell you to record. I don't always have mine recording at first because I use this as office hours a lot and for study sessions. Um, so I always tell my students, you know, I'm absent-minded. So if you don't see the record button, let me know. And um, I definitely they chat that in there. Um, so uh, things like that on the bottom. And once again, I'm gonna try to get that video up for you so you can actually see as the person that, you know, that is running the session, what your bottom looks like. It's a little different than what you're seeing because you guys are the students right now and you're seeing what they would see. So, um, so what is the next thing? So we've got that now in the chat, as you can see, um, we've already have hello everybody. So that's very good. So you'll have students come in. Now, whether or not you want as you're teaching your students to chat in questions, or you could say, hey, wait until I finish an objective, then put your questions in, um, you know, chat them in, that's fine. Another thing you can do is, and I'm gonna ask people to do this. I'm gonna ask everybody to do this. I'm gonna say, okay, hey, my students, you should now have your participants up in your chat window going. What I would like for you to do is I want everybody to raise their hand. And at the bottom of participants, you should have a way to raise your hand. So I want everybody to raise your hand, okay? So find that to where you're raising your hand, everybody. So what I can do is I can choose somebody. I can say, okay, um, who do I want to choose? I'm going to choose Denny. And so I'm going to, oh, wait a minute, Denny, I lost you. I got to do it quick. I'm going to, uh, uh, let's do Jeffrey Adams. I'm going to unmute you and I want you to say hi. Hi there. Yeah. And now I can, un I can lower your hand. I can actually be the one to lower your hand as a teacher. 
Now, what I want everybody to do is I want you as the students to lower your hand. Okay. So now I have allowed um, people to um, lower their hand or I can lower their hand. So in class, you could ask a question said in class, you could say, hey, blah, blah, blah. Who wants to answer that? And they'll raise their hand. Then you pick your student and they can talk and answer your question. So it's kind of nice. It's pretty nice. Um, feature because you can really have an interactive class. Could you explain where the hand option is again? So what you would say to your students at the start of coming in on Zoom, you would say put your cursor in the Zoom window and in that Zoom window at the bottom you're going to see something called more. Hit that more and you want to get participants and you want the chat window off and you ask all your students to do that. So once you've done that at the very bottom of participants the participant window, it's a raise your hand. You can raise your hand or lower your hand. Do you see that now? Because someone asked, yeah, great. Now, okay, I had only, okay, cool. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that your students have both of these open so that they know all their options during class. Now, after your first class, you won't have to do that once all the students know what they can do. And if they choose to, you know, not, raise their hand, they could get rid of the participant window so they have a bigger window to look at, okay? So these are just some of the little things right here. Um, let's see, any other question on that? Okay, so now we've got to where we've talked to our students as to what they can do and how they can interact. The next thing I want to tell you all is that when you do an online like this and you're actually teaching, it is, it can be, extremely interactive where your students are really students that normally in class wouldn't ask you a question all of a sudden they're asking questions so you might actually really have a highly interactive class it's kind of exciting and um, you you're trying to answer their questions and teach at the same time so you'll have to get a rhythm to that but kind of expect it you'll have the unexpected students asking you questions so once you set up how you want to run the class, um, be prepared for that because it's, uh, it's really exhilarating. It's, it's a kind of a neat thing when you do the online. So um, now, as I'm going through this, I'll go, wow, you know what? I want to be able to um, put up my PowerPoints or I want to um, use my doc camera or something like that because I want to teach now. So what you would do is, <clears throat> now in your window, you should see a share also. When you tap in there, do you see share? Does everybody see a share? If you see share, raise your hand so I can see that. Just kind of tap inside your window until you see share. And I want to see everybody's hands up because you should be able to see in your window sharing. Ooh, okay. Yay. Good job. Your students also will be able to share too. Now, what you want to do is during class, you don't want them sharing, but dur during an office hour, you certainly do, okay? Because they might do a problem. They can take a picture of it. Even if they don't have a scanner in their home, they can take a picture of it and send it to you, and you can literally help them with the problem, looking at what they did and find their mistake. So office hours are awesome, awesome with um, this tool, okay? And also, you can get a lot of... Um, you can get a lot of people in your office using Zoom. So instead of just one or two coming in, you can have, I've had um, study sessions where I've had 60 students come and we're doing stuff all together. It's kind of neat. Um, so someone asked, where is the share button? Um, yeah. Um, the share button, when you touch inside of your Zoom, you should be able to see the share come up or it could be in your, um, in your more. Um, who knows, because I don't see what you're seeing. When you share, what was that? So, so it's at the bottom, right in the bottom in the middle of the page. Uh, okay. you drag your mouse to the bottom. So when you put your mouse inside there, it should be at the bottom of that page. That's what I thought, because that's where mine is. Okay. It's a green link, green. It's okay. a green link. It's green, yes, yes. So can you see that now? Does everybody that asked where you could see it, see it now? Everybody good with that? Okay, excellent. Okay, so now I'm gonna share something with you. So I'm gonna, now, just to let you know, I always have a double, yay, see, they shared. 
Now, as the leader of the group, I can preempt you with my share. So I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to stop that screen share, and I want to share my, my screen. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So you're seeing a big nothing. Um, so I share a document with you, okay, and I'm talking to the class. Now, I have a, a computer. I have the surface where I can actually write onto my computer. If you don't and you're waiting for a dot camera, then you can use paint as your better option because you have more control with your cursor. Um, if you have an uh, iPad or a pad, you could use an iPad and write on it. It's really nice and you can actually do problems. So what I do is I actually have something and I would say, okay, um, hey all, have you created your Zoom account? And I can, you know, kind of highlight things as I'm teaching. Or what I do with my PowerPoints is I actually have a PowerPoint that has questions on it. And I'll tell my students, look, I'm giving you 10 minutes to answer this. Then after, and I pause my recording as I let them work on their problem. And then after 10 minutes, I start the record again. And I say, hey, let's go over this. And I liter literally would say, okay, um, I asked you to find the probability that X was less than 25. This is how we do it. And I'll give the answer. You know, I'll, I'll write it out. But I'm a kind of sloppy chick. So I actually on the PowerPoint have the next slide very neatly done for them. But I actually upload the answers later on with the video. I'll upload all the work that I did. Now, if I have a worksheet, what I would do with a worksheet, so let's say that I gave them a worksheet um, and I gave them some problems, again, I would have the worksheet and I'd work out the problems with them. And then I, when the class is over, I save this thing. I have my save as. I save it as a PDF. You know, I'll save it as a PDF somewhere. And then I would um, upload that with all my work on it too, as well as the video. Cause some students don't want to watch the whole video again. They just want to make sure they got what you, you know, how we did the steps for a problem. These are kind of good methods that you can do. So I saw that, um, let me see. Um, I just want to make sure cause I hadn't put my chat up. If anybody had questions with all of this wonderful stuff. So where did you go? I can't find my chat. It's got to be somewhere in here. Because um, I want to make sure that I'm answering questions as we do this. Um, so in here, um, how do I upload a doc? Um, you don't. What you do is with Zoom, you wouldn't upload a doc to Zoom. You would actually have this particular document on your, on your computer. And when you share, it would pop up. So what I do is since I have two monitors, I put all the stuff that I'm going to do for my class on the one monitor. And then I have my Zoom here so that I can just pull documents over to them. But if you don't have that, then you can just have the documents ready down here and you can pull up the document you want um, by just clicking on it. So if I had my documents and at the start of the class, I have them waiting for me, I would pull up whichever document I want to start with and work on it. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Yeah, there is a board underneath but a lot of people are finding trouble with that i have on my thing i have my own where i can um actually have my own whiteboard and and draw on it um i tend to do that too and then i can um write on that and share it as pdfs also i do a couple of things when i'm in here whatever works best i like to have everything ready before class though and write on the things that i have um just because I, it makes me feel confident, but that's the way I do it. I mean, everybody will have their own way of doing this. So as I go through, so I'm running through here, I finish up problems, then I would say, hey, does anybody have questions? And so then I'd look at my chat and I'd look to see who has questions um, um, for me. And then I'd answer them one at a time. If you have a large lecture and you have, um, TAs, 
you might want to have your TAs come if you're doing a problem session, have them on there and have your TAs answer questions as you go along too. That's really helpful also. But if you're alone, look, I've had a large, large class in here and I've been able to answer all the questions. So I've been okay by myself. But these are just ways that if you wanna make things a little bit easier, um, you could have your TAs help you. Um, it would be kind of nice. So um, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment because what I wanna do is make sure I have covered everything I wanted to at this beginning session so that now I can ask you all what questions you have um, in here. So anybody that has a question, this is just the, the small things, you know, like how you can move around Zoom. I helped a group of people earlier this week and honestly, I can show you all of these things but until you get in and do it yourself, you won't feel comfortable. So I would say if you can find somebody that will help you, um, go on and um, have them help. You know, like you could be the pr participant as they're the ones that are running the session and vice versa. So mm -hmm. I'm... Hi, didn't I invite the D? Okay, so in here, um, if you have a question, you can either type it in or unmute yourself. Oh, that's kind of tough because we've got a lot of people, but let's see. How would you uh, allow parallel screens for you and your students sharing at the same time? I have never done that. I don't know if that's possible. Now, can you share two um, documents at the same time? Yes, you'd have to put them on your screen and share both of them. So you could do this. So let's say I wanna share my screen. And in here, I could put this document, minimize it, um, put up a second document, you know, minimize that. And I'd have two documents up there that I could show my students working at the same time. You certainly can do that. That's perfectly reasonable. But I've never, I don't know, I've never done it. I've never tried to have both me. I don't think you can have both people sharing. I've just never done it. So I better not say I no. Maybe it's possible, but I've never done that and I didn't know it was possible. Is it possible to record a live session and then also upload to Elms? That's what I do. I actually, um, like what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, at the end of it, this video that we're making here, it's going to render on my computer and I'll have a, a video of it. I'll send it to Stephanie and she's going to upload it onto the site. So yes, that's exactly what I do with my classes. I will have the video and then I'll upload it right onto Elms. However, if you've created your account to where it's on Elms, it will automatically upload to Elm the video. And your students can go to Zoom on Elms and go to your meetings, I mean, and, and go to the videos and they'll be able to see the video, okay? Um, is it possible? I don't think it's possible for you to do. Okay, could you show us how to break the participants into smaller rooms? There is a, okay, so let me stop sharing. There is a, a chat room feature that you can have. I've actually never used it. That's one thing I haven't done. Um, I never found the use for that in, in my, in what I do. So I'm sorry, I can't, um, I know there's a break room feature that you can hit and you can put people in different groups. I've just never used it. So I'm sorry. I can't help with that one because I've just never done it. But Sue, yes? Sue this is Dave Lovermore. Uh, I've talked to people that have used it, uh, other institutions, and it seems to work quite well for group work and stuff like that. So people can definitely play with it. I think TAs can play with it. You can make them, you can, I think you can have up to at least four groups going and you can monitor each group but the groups don't see what each other's doing um, so it's anyway it's something people should play with and report back to the group so we all benefit from intelligence okay thank you so much yeah um like i said i've never had to do the group you know in the way that i've used it never had to use it but i know that it does have that feature to break people away um <clears throat> oh one thing i did want to say in the chat when you're the um, when you're the one that is is conducting the meeting, in the chat, 
there's three little dots. When you hit that, you can make it to where people can't privately chat with one another. They can only chat to the whole class. So you can stop people, you know, getting away from the class and talking to one another. Um, so you might want to do that. Like you got to play around in Zoom. In the video that I made, I, um, in the video that I made on YouTube and that will be put up, um, I show you how to do that, how to make it so that your students can only chat within the class. And again, you might wanna not have that feature depending on what you're doing in your class. Okay, so does the recording record the chats too? The, uh, so chats, let me... the chats are naturally recorded or, or you actually have as an instructor, the recording of the chats. Um, so can I interrupt there for, for a second? Um, back to, there's a question about uploading to Elms. And yeah, I just I saw I yours. Yeah, can you show them? Can you actually show them that, Jeff? Um, give me one second. Let me think if I can. Let me just say what I was going to say, which sure. is that the video that's on the math department site now called Canvas and Zoom or something like that um, does exactly that. It shows you how if you launch Zoom from within Canvas when you're done and you click end the meeting, it automatically gets uploaded to Canvas. So you don't have to go through some extra step of going to YouTube or whatever. Okay. And also, when you're actually making, Jeff, when you're actually making your um, meeting, there is a, uh, a choice where you could say record to the cloud or on your um, computer. Right. They want to keep it to the cloud or it won't go automatically, correct? That's correct. You, you definitely want to save it to the cloud. And um, an important point is that um, anything that's saved in the cloud does not count against your uh, disk quota. And if you upload videos um, in some other way, it depends on how you do it, but um, it's, they will count against your disk quota. And so you don't want to do that. Um, so it's definitely best to keep them in the cloud. And that's, I wanted people not, when they see that, yeah, go to the cloud. Don't say record onto my computer. I have to do, cause I've got a personal account. Um, but if you if you're going through elms that's the way you want to go because like you said you could run out of room real quick how can students download their quizzes directly to canvas well it depends you mean if you're giving them a document a quiz um then you would create an assignment on elms and make sure that you have uploads and that they can upload a document and that's how a student I can show you that if you would like me to. Um, I'll, Jeff, I'll do, Jeffrey, I'll do that first. Um, uh, show them how to do that if, or unless you're ready to go with the Elms. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, so let me get in here. Yeah, I'll show you how you can create an assignment <clears throat> and be able to have your students upload and then you can grade with the speed grader. Okay, it's really a great feature of Canvas. And in fact, the quizzes done on Canvas are excellent because you can randomize questions. You can make it very difficult for them to cheat if it's a timed quiz where you randomize um, the uh, questions and the answer or do write-ins. So these are things that are really great. So let me share my screen again. So you can see my Elms. And here's this. So what you would do is you'd have assignments and you would make assignments. So in assignments, here's my first assignment. So I've already created this one. It's gonna save me a little bit of time. So, so I'll show you what you would do. You would upload whatever your assignment is, whether it's a, P, you know, a, document, a, a document or a PDF with whatever directions you have. Then you tell how many points it is. You let it know what assignment group it is. So if you're gonna call it quizzes, make sure you have an assignment group called quizzes. And then um, but you, would want it, you would want it to be counted as to the final grade. Then you would say, if you didn't have this, if you had no submissions like that, you want to make it online where they can do file uploads. So you'd wanna check that. You could even have, if you just have a question you want them to answer, you could have them do text entries, whatever you'd want. Then you can actually put the due date, when you want it available and all that good stuff. And then you hit save and now you have an assignment on there that they can upload. 
and you can now grade it when they upload it. So you go, oh, how do I grade that? You would go to your grade book and you'd use what I like my students is I like them to do, I like my TAs when they grade these, mm -hmm. I want them to use what's called speed grader. So you go into an assignment. Now, most of my assignments are, let's see, where are my mini tests? See how you see that? That means that one hasn't been graded. All of these have been graded. So this one hasn't been graded. So I'd click on it, I'd hit the arrow, and I'd go to Speed Grader. In Speed Grader, you now can grade what they uploaded. So you're looking at it, um, and if you have your grading guidelines sitting next to you, and you look at something, you say, hmm, I don't like that title. You'd go here, you'd go here and you'd say, bad title or however you want to do it and you say minus one point okay so if it's out of 25 now they have a 24 and you would keep putting comments on here and then you give them finally give them their grade so if you saw another you know another place where they've done something wrong you put another comment and you leave that comment and then you finally put their grade in so i don't want to you create this thing yet. Um, now that's one way to do it. Other people don't like that. They say, oh, that takes too long. But so then you can add comments to whatever you want to do. And then you would submit the comment down there. And then the grade, once you put the grade in there, that's what goes on Elm's grade book. Okay, so I'm going to pull that off because I'm sure people have questions about that. Um, okay, so... Breakout rooms might be more featured if you set up breakout rooms by starting UMD. So Karen answered about the breakout rooms in there. Thank you so much. Um, is there any option where a student can talk to me privately through audio, not through chat? Not on Zoom, not, not during a, a uh, session. You'd have to have a private session with them. Okay. Um, uh, questions about how to upload on elms a quiz or something like that so your students can now upload you know if they did a problem set they could take a picture of it upload it onto elms and you can grade it through the speed grader it's a really great feature in elms uh, do i have other questions i just joined my dear oh, oh hello <laughs> how are you hello, let me put my I don't know anything of what you said because I was in another meeting and now I'm in desperate situation because I just showed up here and I have one question. <laughs> if I record myself, how is it easy to upload my lecture? How am I supposed to do that? Of course, you must have discussed this already. Um, so you want to do it without the class there or with the class? I would say without the class because this is the advice that we got. That it is better if we do it earlier and we upload it. Okay, so if you want to do it through Zoom, um, okay. Luke, should I should I do that demonstration now? Would sure. that? Yeah, go okay. right ahead. Just I'll, give me a second. We'll do this demonstration. Get to that. <laughs> go okay. ahead. No, I mean that that's that's addressing the, it's addressing this question. Okay. Um, so let let, uh, let me share my screen. This is Jeff Adams, by the way. Hi, Jeff. Uh, okay. So uh, are we looking at my um, six thirty six class here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, give me a second. Um, so, uh, so, so first of all, Constantina, your 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 question, you were saying something about the recommendation is to do it before class or or something. I, I think the the issue is whether you're doing a live class or you're doing a recording, and um, it I, it doesn't matter so much. If you do a live class, you should record it. And when you're done, you should upload it. And if you're not doing a live class, you just do it and you record it and you upload it. So in either either event, you you want to record it and and upload it. Okay, is that clear? Yes. Okay. So um, uh, I go. I've enabled Zoom, mm -hmm. so um, I can click on Zoom, and uh, I get here to my Zoom page, and. Let's look at uh, all my Zoom meetings. So uh, these are upcoming meetings. I've scheduled a bunch of classes. Uh, here's some previous meetings which I've had. And if I click on, well, let's go to cloud recordings. That's the main point here. Um, 
uh, for example, I have a file here. Uh, I go to cloud recordings and then under this class right here, it says two files. I click on that and there are two files here. One is a video and the other is the audio only. And the students can access this here. They, they can um, uh, navigate to this page and they can watch the recording. And this is in the cloud. Um, this, is, this is in the Zoom cloud and that's where you want to be. Okay, so let me show you how you do that. And again, um, this is all explained in the video that's on the math remote teaching page. So I won't, I'm not going to go through slowly. Um, you can watch that video for a more careful uh, presentation. But the basic idea is the following. You, um, uh, you go to your, your Zoom page and you schedule a new meeting. Now, you can either schedule a meeting for the future or right away, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say we're doing it right away. So um, I'm gonna skip the description. Uh, it's not a recurring meeting, no re registration. I'm the host, uh, the host will have his video on, the participants won't. Um, most of these settings are fine. Uh, mute participants by entry is recommended as Sue was saying earlier. Um, I'm gonna use my personal meeting ID. Um, if you don't do that, uh, I forget how there's an option to you'll get a different ID but let's just do that and let's this is the key thing here record the meeting automatically and on the local computer or in the cloud the crucial thing is you want to do in the cloud if you do it on your local computer you'll have the video on your computer and if you want to edit it that's that's a good thing to do if you want to upload it to YouTube that's a good thing to do but if you wanna make it readily available to your students, you should do in the cloud, okay? Click save, and let's start the meeting. Now, I'm not sure if, if this, uh, you, uh, you were already in another meeting, do you want to leave it? No. <laughs> okay, so let's not actually do that, um, but um, let me just say, uh, let's see, how do I go back to where I was? Um, yeah, let's just say that, that um, when you do do that, when you're done and you click end the meeting, there will be something which pops up and says, okay, I'm saving it to the cloud now. And I'll go back to the Zoom page. And if you just navigate here, all my Zoom meetings, it will show up here. It takes a few minutes, but um, it will show up here. And again, your students can navigate here and see it, and it's stored in the Zoom cloud, and so it doesn't count against your disk quota. Questions? Now, Constantina, I put the YouTube videos of how everything that I did that you might have missed uh -huh. um, in the chat. The second one, part two, kind of deals with the sharing the files and how you can get your lecture put up, and oh. it's only about it's the two of them together is 15 minutes, so they're not long. They're straight to the point that get to it. So um, if you want to see how, you know, to share your screen, how to get the document there, you can do that. I did it through Camtasia. I actually videoed so you could see as an instructor how everything oh, looks. Nice. How can I find the videos? Can you send me a um, link? Right, yeah, right there in the chat. See, oh, oh, go to the bottom of your screen. Put your cursor on the bottom of your screen. You're going to see more. Hit participants in chat. Ah, participants, yes. And then hit chat. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom of chat, I put the YouTube links. Here are the... Ah, the part one and part two. Yes, yes. And both of them together is 15 minutes, so it's not a lot of time. I try to get to the point real quick. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you so very much. <laughs> I know, because it's crazy time. So I want to make sure people, as quickly as I can get people up to snuff, <laughs> So, Sue, these are the same links that are on the departmental website. Yes, they are on the site. They should be up. I think Stephanie said they should be up by right now. Yeah. Sue, just to clarify, the what you showed there was um, how to um, save things to your disk and then go through YouTube and then put a link to your YouTube video? No, that on YouTube, what we're doing right here, I did it without everybody. I just showed in case somebody couldn't make it to our, our, our Zoom meeting. This is the same stuff that I've gone over here 
is on those YouTube. Oh, I see. Okay. Ah, very nice. Mm -hmm. So like Constantina was late, but now she can see the beginning part, you know, to the end. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. First, sorry, I got late because I was in another Zoom meeting with Constantina. <laughs> and I have a question you probably addressed earlier, which is the use of these uh, camera documents. Uh, because I've never done it. Is it a video or some information I can read about how to use this? Oh, it's going to be really easy. Once the doc camera comes, you're going to hook it to your computer. And then in the share, there's a little, if you touch your screen, you're going to see something green that says share. Yeah, yeah, the share screen. That share, will, you'll see doc camera and you'll push it and it will go and turn your doc camera on. So you'll be okay. able to write and talk at the same exact time and okay. your students will see the doc camera. Do you know? The delivery time of this. Uh, um, we just got an email just just now. It popped in as I was trying to get the YouTube links. It just popped in that we're supposed to fill out the uh, doc camera, you know, to get it. So they're thinking maybe late next week. Is that? Does any? Can anybody speak to that? I think that's what I heard was late last late. So, next so for next week, right. we have to do something else. Yeah, you're going to have to supplement okay. either by using paint. Okay and writing with paint on your screen for people to see what you're doing. It's not optimal, but you still can do it. Um, unless you've got like an iPad or on the um, website, you can make your phone like a doc camera where you're, you put Zoom on your phone, you start the meeting on your phone, put your, you know, have something where you can lay your phone looking down at a piece of paper and you can write on your paper and make a makeshift doc camera. So that's another, <laughs> And that was a really cool idea. So that's what you could do in the in the meantime. Um, so the the email from and I think it was Antoine earlier. Uh, it seemed to indicate that the cameras might actually be shipped out tomorrow. So oh. there's, there's yes, a right. uh, if I can just yeah. for a second, oh, there uh, you go. <laughs> they're supposed to be receiving the camera today and hoping to ship them tomorrow. So if you did get the email asking you to fill out the form, doing right away so that they can gather all the shipping addresses and send the camera as soon as possible. So and I think they're, they're, they're sending them via email. FedEx. So we got emails requesting our names or something? Yeah, it, it says something like, yes, um, I received urgent them. fill out this ASAP to get dot camera loaner. Right, by Mark? Uh, you have to fill out your exact camera camera address, Eduardo. Oh yes, I just got it. Yes, yes, I'm telling you, it like popped up magically. It was like, yep. yay! Ah, okay. okay. Dress. Okay. 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 Can one practice without scheduling a meeting? Hold on a second, there was a question. Um, can you practice without scheduling a meeting in there? Yes, you can. You can just go on there and start a meeting now and practice. Mm -hmm. And I would say, honestly, go on and do that. Um, what I did is I used my phone and I actually made my phone the student and I was the person because I wanted to see what the students saw because I rarely ever see that. And I so I actually practiced with myself and, and that's how I made the video too so that you could see a student and then look at what the student view looks like and what your view looks like. So that's on those YouTube videos I go through and show that. The only thing I think I forgot now that we've said this is how to end a meeting, which when you end the meeting, you end the video. When you hit the bottom of your screen as a person that does this, you guys see leave the meeting, I see end the meeting. And when I end it, I end it for all of you. I hack you all out of here when I hit the end of the meeting. Now, if you leave the meeting, the rest of us are still here. So me as the one that made the meeting, I'm the only one that can end it. And once I end it, the video is then put into the cloud. It has to render, put into the cloud, and then it'll be right available for your students to see. I have a question about, uh, so one thing that's recommended when you make video things is the video should be short. Yet me the meetings tend to be longer. So is there a way to, to you know, stop the video and oh, yeah. Create a file and upload that, and then again, again, without disrupting the flow of the presentation too much. Yes, there's a thing that says pause or stop recording, and I do do that in my in my class when I have them. You know, like I'll teach a little bit, then I'll give them a problem to do, and I'll say, okay, guys, remember, I'll give you 10, 15 minutes to do it. I pause my recording. I don't want that because if they looked at, they get all they wouldn't know where to you know begin. Well, you still get one recording though, right? 
If I do it that way, yes. So I, I was asking if you can actually break the presentation or the event into, say, four videos. No, I don't think so. I don't, yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, whereas if you're pre-recording, as, as some people do, which I think is good for large lectures, uh, then you can do that. Uh, you can set up four videos and post it for the students, say. Yeah. Um, I, now, when I actually do recordings, I actually got Camtasia, and that thing rocks as far as making videos, because you can make them any length you want. You can make it really long and then cut that in pieces. But if you're going to use Zoom, you'd have to do it outside and then do it in pieces and then have each of those be recorded. That's the only way to do it. Um, let, let me uh, um, raise one one issue that uh, people should be aware of. Uh, there, there's a bug, I think, and I haven't quite figured out. It, it seems it, it happens to some people and not to others, but when you make a Zoom recording in the class the way I just demonstrated, um, you can navigate there and see it. And in principle, your students can also. Um, there seems to be a problem with that. Sometimes it takes a long time, even hours or a day, for students to be able to see it. Or it's even possible that it doesn't show up for the students. Uh, Tom Haynes had some problem with that. So be aware that it's possible you'll tell your students, go to such and such a place to see the video, and they'll say, I can't. And we're working on that, and hopefully we'll figure out what the story is. So That's all. What do you, do you really advise us? Do you advise us to record and upload or to do it live? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any advice on that. Um, I don't think it really matters because let's say you're giving an hour long class. Um, if, you, if you record it beforehand, it takes you an hour. And if you wanna have students watching while you're doing that, it doesn't really matter. Now, uh, it, there is one difference, which is if you're going to make it live, we're supposed to do it actually during the class time. So if you want flexibility, you want to be able to record this meeting whenever you, this class whenever you want, then that, that would say um, forget the live class and just record it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my regular class time. I, I think there's a certain continuity and regular scheduled uh, advantage to that. And I'm going to do them live and then record them and, and make them available. Uh, Jeff, uh, if I, oh, go ahead, Ricardo. If we do, if we do this live, is it, is it possible for the students perhaps to ask questions, right? Yeah, that's more class. And that's what I think you want because I'm telling you, and especially uh, Constantina, you're going to love it. You're going to have students that generally don't talk, ask you questions. It's a very lively, engaging mm -hmm. thing. So I love the live. Seriously, it's I've had large. I mean, I'm got 70 students and it is like amazing. So I don't know. I love it. So you might want to try right it right now. Um, since we don't have yet the document camera and um, Would you suggest that I have a PDF file and I share my screen and this is how I do the class? Mm -hmm. right. actually, I, I upload my lecture notes this year for the students, but now I will prepare it and I'm going to discuss them in front of them, something like this. Yes. If you're, if and, you're, well, there's the other thing too. Um, you're going to want, especially for the first day of class, so you might not even have your document, camera as you explain how they are to use Zoom and what they're supposed to look at, what your, you know, Zoom etiquette is. It, you're going to really, just like the first day of class, how you explain how your class is going to be run, you got to explain how this online class is going to be run because it's going to be a little bit different. Do you want them asking questions as you're teaching? Do you want them to ask after you finish a particular objective? So you set your tone. So this first day, Monday, is like your first day of class. So you might not get to too much teaching as you're teaching them how they use Zoom. And, you know, because as you're getting used to it, too. And uh, let them know, you know, on it, be very honest with the students. I always am. I'm like, look, this is the, you know, I'm not really... Uh, this is my first time using this, so you know, and they'll help oh, you. Yes, out. I have already told them the last time. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm not very high tech, we're going to learn together. <laughs> and see, That's it's what... great, and they will help you. They are, I'm telling your students, they're going to amaze you. You are, it's cool, it, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. 
So Sue, I have uh, some feedback that's not my own experience, but I was talking with a bunch of people through this National uh, Educational Electronic Seminar in Math Ed. We we're talking about online. And people kind of agree with you totally for the smaller the class, the more you want to do it live and the interaction. It tends to get unwieldy the larger the lectures are. And so then there's more people that prefer pre-recording but breaking it into smaller bits so the students can dig into it and then just have office hours or something for clarification. It's just a class dynamics and since each class has a different personality, there's not a one size fits all rule that these people tend to do agree to, but, but you sort of have to touch and uh, you know, feel how your class responds to the different things. But this general trend of really going to the live uh, interactive stuff for small, smaller classes and then more of a presentation for larger classes, that seemed to be a consensus. Well, I, can, I guess because I've taught so many large lectures, I've done, I did my 250 um, students with yeah. Zoom. As I said, I, it's a trend. It's just a, a, a trend, and some people say it works better. Even people that do it in large lectures say it works better in the smaller ones, in their view. Yeah, oh, definitely. You like the smaller ones because it doesn't make you sweat as much. I'm telling you, I actually sweat <laughs> doing these, on, <laughs> these online classes because you got all these questions, and you've got, you got to make sure you got your stuff ready, and you got a lot more. I, mean, I find that I get a lot more participation on the online so yeah the large lectures like holy moly wait wait stop with the questions let me answer them you know one at a time so um it's it's neat um it's something for people to try because you might say yeah i can handle it or Ooh, i don't like it and i'll do the pre-recorded so i would say you know give it a try and let your students know look we're trying stuff out we might go to pre-recorded but it's nice to be able to answer their questions in real time so make sure that you know, may, having office hours. May I suggest that we do something, we try this for a couple of weeks and then we share our experiences so that we learn from each other and not reinvent the wheel? Oh, for sure. I and think I think that's why they like made that the Slack. I think that's why they have that Slack. So we can, right? Isn't that why the Slack was created? Yeah, let me, let me really encourage people to sign up for Slack. And uh, uh, there will, there's a lot of uh, communal knowledge which will be shared there. Mm -hmm. Have you sent us the information already for Slack? Just go to the, um, the math department remote teaching page. There's a link. Okay. Because I'm already, somebody else invited me for Slack. If I have been invited once, is it easier? Or I have to be, am I using the same thing? I have another meeting that has a Slack. As long as it's your UMD account, it'll just be the same. The same. Okay. Um, but I, I think what will happen is, I'm not sure exactly, but you'll see different channels, and there, I'm not sure how um, which channels show up or something. But uh, it's the same. You just have one Slack account. Oh, you know what? I did because I had another Slack account with something else. It will say, "This is your Slack account. Do you want to enter another one?" And you go down. I think it's like Math UMD Math. Is mm -hmm. this one, and then you hit that one, so now you'll be in the math UMD. And I you see. can always go to the other Slack one, but you can stay in the UMD one. Yeah, that's it, because I did it yesterday. So. Yes, yes, because I am in another one on Quicks Quantum, and I think it will be def different for sure. Yeah. Very nice. So guys, will, will we be okay, you think? Are you optimistic? Oh, you are, I think you guys are gonna love it. I'm not kidding. I mean, I'm gonna miss, I told my students this on did the last class, I said, I'm gonna miss seeing your faces, like really seeing you in the class, which you will, but you're gonna find this to be a very neat tool. And like I said, I have done help sessions and um, test reviews using Zoom for years now. And I've done online classes for my one class where we can get on together and work. I, I do it every Friday with them. Love it. I really, really love it. But I, you know, there's something about seeing your, your kids, man, you know? Yes. And you're going to miss them. <laughs> I do the other thing. I heard today, Liliana was tell, talking about her husband, who is professor, and he said he spent an hour and uh, giving the lecture and he thought that he had clicked the record button and he didn't and he missed the whole thing <laughs> this is the this disadvantage of 
pre-recording because you may do it and nobody hears it. <laughs> So I'll, I'll give a slightly different answer to your question. I'm, um, I also think it's a it's a great medium. I'm not quite as uh, in, um, enthusiastic as Sue, but I do think it's true that we've been talking about this sort of thing for years. And if there's any uh, uh, silver lining to the ridiculous uh, situation we find ourselves in, it's that finally people are going to get online. And I think a number of people will take to this and it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And from now on, whenever we have a travel, we don't have to find a substitute for our classes. Mm -hmm. For today, we can give. Well, see, I've been doing it for years. Like if I catch a cold, I'll do a Zoom meeting, you know. <laughs> but exactly. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, Thank I didn't, you. I know, like, I don't want to sit there and give you stuff to read now. I want you with me. You can hear me suffer. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, so, Constantina, I have a suggestion that you change your background. The, the sun bright makes you hard to see. I it's see. a beautiful scene, but we miss seeing you, and your students will miss seeing you. Oh, yes. I, let me so ask you something. Because better background, even though that's a beautiful background. I'd love to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to do this. Uh, Dave, I'm going to tell you the background I'm going to make. It's actually possible to have a video background. And so something you can, is something you can do is, is you can have a video of yourself nodding. <laughs> and then you don't even have to watch. You just go away. And, but it, it, you can pretend you're at the meeting. <laughs> oh, that's wrong. That's wrong on so many levels. <laughs> I, I've seen this. Somebody did it. Oh, I love that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so the, they were actually in one of the sessions that the, AM, I think it was an AMS session, they were recommending, even though there's that option, to not use it because the moving backgrounds tend to distract students. Ah, let me see this then. I if I don't background. use the background. So do you, do you like this better? <laughs> Well, you still got bright windows. <laughs> exactly. So I have to change the location of my desk, my phone. <laughs> this is my only solution. Or get darker curtains. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So could I just say something about using the document camera? Because that's something I have done. Um, what I've done is um, I plug in the document camera into my USB port before I start Zoom. And then down in that uh, bottom menu bar where it has the little camera image, right, mine um, is muted right now, but um, there's a little up carrot. And so I can change my camera view. So if I wanted, so let me just, can I share my screen and just show you what I would do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me do this, share screen. Um, so, um, Right. Do you see where I'm got the carrot here that I'm hovering over? We can't see. We are oh, not. You, can't you see haven't that. shared the screen. Uh, I thought I shared. Maybe I didn't. Try again. Your uh, video camera is not on then. No, but I, the screen should share, still share, right? Is it sharing yet? No. No. Uh, maybe you can turn on your video camera. Okay. There. Video. All right. Now there's me. Now if I do share screen, now will it? See if it comes on. Okay, we'll try again. Um, oh, I see. There's goofy things. Okay. It worked. Did it come up for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but I wanted to show you what it looked like in Zoom, and I'm not sure it's going to... Hmm. It doesn't seem to like to show me... Okay. In my Zoom screen, there was on that bottom menu bar... Um, yeah. Oh. No, nope, that's something else. There is a, um, maybe that would re show it though. Come on, back up. This is actually, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, the screen share idea was a great idea. It didn't work. Um, let me go back to, um, I can change my video input into my um, uh, document camera. Let me, maybe I can do that for you. Does that show my document camera? Now it does, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Don't see it. It's it's up in your private thing, uh, but it's not. We're not seeing it on the shared screen. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Okay, so but if I were teaching, 
I would be able to just um, wear it in the bottom of your, uh, I'm going to stop sharing. In the bottom of your- Oh, there uh, it is. Yeah. Oh, now it came up big? Okay, yeah, because what I wanted to do was just, I didn't want to share my screen. I just wanted to change my camera. So instead of using my webcam, I chose the document camera. And now the students can see whatever I'm writing. So I can use this like my Blackboard and I don't have to, you know, have a digital pen or something. Mm -hmm. so, I see. So that, and that means that you can even teach right on the paper and exactly. mm -hmm. yes, but it is hard for them to see if you haven't written in the past probably. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I think that's probably what I would like. Can you show us, Karen, how the document camera looks like? Oh, what my document camera looks yeah. like? Well, I have a little one. It's not going to be the same as yours. Um, mine is just a little guy that I got from, I ordered this off of Amazon. So that's a little $200 document camera because I want to. I think that we're going to, I think what the campus is going to be getting us are big ones that have like a big tablet area on them. Um, at least that was my impression. Like the ones that are in the large lecture places? That was what I understood, that they were going to use that same kind for us and then repurpose them in classrooms. I love that, though. That looks so good. That's going to make writing so much easier, you know? Mm -hmm. Then when you're writing on your screen, like, so I can't mm -hmm. wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just recommend a felt tip pen because um, it's a little fuzzy otherwise if you just use a regular pen. But the felt tip oh. seems to make it nice. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. This is a very good tip. <laughs> wow, we need all the help we can get. Don't you know it? <laughs> Dave, have you tried it ever? The document cameras? I use them all the time in Edward St. John's, and it's basically the same kind of thing they're giving us. I see, I see. Uh, uh, what I advise is it's hard to do the whole lecture with them, uh, simply because, well, they're kind of vertical like a sheet of paper, and it's hard to fit you know, it's not like a blackboard in terms of the information you can fit on it, visible to the class. But it's wonderful for actually hand going through an example and, and maybe a graphing example or an analytic example. They see it appear right in front of them in real time. They like that. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Man, we're getting some stuff done here, <laughs> so we've done well. <laughs> we need to, and then let me ask you something. Uh, remote teaching 001. If I know nothing, I'm going to go to the remote teaching re web page of the department and the links that you sent me, Sue, and that will be okay, you think? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I think that'll be a really good start. And honestly, if anybody wants to practice, you can email me or just email anybody. Or like I said, I practice with myself just to see what students look like using my phone as the other, um, as the other Zoom person. But I had to leave it out of the room because there was feedback. <laughs> but you know, you, you, you play around with it. Make sure you practice at least one time before Monday just to get a feel for it. You know, you yes, let me ask you something else. Comment. I, in order for the students to know which, I have to send them a link. The link will be sent automatically if I fill out this form that you showed us earlier. For instance, I have to, whenever I attend so, a Zoom meeting, I receive a link and I click on it. Yeah, so what's going to happen is when you go to the uh, Canvas page and you open up the Zoom thing where you start a meeting, You'll, your students will be invited to that meeting. Automatically, okay. And, and in fact, we, uh, Radu and I played with this yesterday, and as soon as we in, invited uh, the students to the class meetings, one of them popped on anyway, and so okay. we did our dry run with the, that student. Uh, it okay. was both of us uh, playing with it and trying to learn how to do. The one thing we failed at doing was to figure out how to save the rec recording. So I've got to go back and look at these two links that... Uh, we were talking about and yes, out because I noticed a lot of people had hard time exactly at this point to try to save uh, the recorded the thing that they recorded and then they were they lost it you know so yeah we that's what happened to us so that's why I was hoping to well I'm gonna try again uh, <laughs> see and, if we get right and, we can I told the students not to count on the recordings the first week we were gonna try but understand yeah. that we're it's the blind leading the blind Mm -hmm. Sue, this has been great. 
Thank you. Thank you. No, I wish I had uh, come earlier, but I was in the meeting and I couldn't make it. You see how our life has become? I'm attending more meetings now than before even. I know we're going to be trapped in Zoom meetings. So we really need this virtual, this Jeff background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes, can I ask a question? C can you hear me? Oh, I can. Uh, I've been trying to post something on chat for the last 15 minutes. So I wrote something, doesn't matter. It's a stupid question. No. I, I chose to everyone, fine. Then I have three little dots to the right. I see chat and it hasn't been saved. Well, what did I do wrong? Hmm. So you, in there you say, it says to everyone, you. You wrote something and did you hit enter? Uh, I now, okay. now hit enter. Did, do, uh, do you see my question? I don't think so. No. I, I mean. Hmm. Well, that's odd. Uh, that, that doesn't matter. It was a stupid question. Um, well, one thing is, Mate, there's an address feature. Can you look to see who is in the address? Uh, everyone. Okay. Wow. Did you just type under it and return? It should go through. Yeah. Well, it says type a message. Yeah, and then you type a message in there. And then, and then you turn. And then hit return. Yep. And it should work. Huh. Nothing happened. Okay, that's a first. <laughs> Honestly, is a first. Uh, it does, doesn't matter. Did Dave, Dave sent his, his test message. <laughs> yes, and I've been trying to send mine for the last 15 minutes. So. Okay, can you yeah, do Mate, I think that's something specific to your machine or your setup. So yeah, I guess you need help with that. Oh, oh okay. Or, or just not use it, or just well, work. well, one thing you could try. You know where it says everyone, the little down arrow. Um, why don't you do uh, pick somebody and try to send the message to just one person and see if that works, and let the person know that you're sending it to them. You know, I don't. Know, that's just strange. Guys, let me take a, a gallop now. How confident you are that we're going to make it? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, I love all that. <laughs> you see, we know. Yay. <laughs> oh, well, know that if you have any questions, really, you have a lot of people and we have the um, Slack. You could email me. I'll try to help as best I can and as quickly as I can. You know, I, I can't help you when I'm teaching, but any other time I can help. Um, and then if there's a question that seems to be popping up more, I'll make another video and post it to YouTube and make sure the link gets up and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you, Sue. Very so, nice. uh, in case people didn't see it, the provost just sent out a message as this meeting started saying that we're going to uh, uh, pass fail uh, option with the students allowing to take a letter grade as option. But if they don't do anything, it'll be pass fail for this semester only. And let me ask you something, uh, Dave. Is there any decision about the final exam? How are we going to give a final exam? Well, now that we know the grading option, that's up for, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, Antoine's uh, uh, decision to make what we're going to do about uniform finals. But mm -hmm. clearly, evaluation in online education is a huge problem in terms mm -hmm. of the integrity of evaluation. And uh, this is the main reason why MIT went to pass no credit because of their experience with, uh, shall we say, not, uh, uh, not fidel uh, fidelity of their evaluations. And it's sort of disappointing that the students are being given this A-B option 
but uh, it will incentivize cheating. This is what MIT has found. So this is something we just got to live with because in my opinion, the administration made a b bad call here. I think Doran expressed as much at yesterday's meeting, but uh, we'll just have to live with it. Huh. So that means that I have given one midterm in my class. My second midterm will be canceled the way that it goes. If I don't have a final, if I have to give a grade, it will be even pass fail. It has to be based on the first mid midterm and the homeworks. No, no, no. But the students have the option of, of uh, taking a letter grade. So we will not know whether they're doing pass fail or letter grade. We will still have to assign letter grades. I see. Okay. But, but the, uh, the advice that was given, uh, I think it was by Antoine or was it Doran? I don't remember yesterday about forgetting the pluses and minuses, sticking with A, B, C, and F uh, as your letter grades uh, simplifies matters. Mm -hmm. right, there's, also a, sorry, there's also an email from Doron in, uh, in your mailbox that uh, claims that, so as far as final exams are concerned, so the usual requirement that we have final exam has been waived for this semester, which means that it's up to individual instructor to decide if they want to have a final or not. Uh, we'll have to issue, the department will issue some, some will make some decision regarding lower level classes, uh, 100, 200, but for a 400 level class, it's going to be up to the instructor to decide if they want uh, to, to have a final exam or not. If you have a final exam, it will have to be uh, some kind of take home exam. Mm -hmm. And that is fine. You can have a take home. You have to assume that it's an open book uh, exam. Uh, open the internet. <laughs> And you can use that as part of your grade. Now, in the email of Doran, it also says that you are free to uh, revise the way uh, you want to compute your grade at this point. As long ah, as you make that good. available to the students, you can change. So you can, you also do not have to cancel your second midterm. You can keep a second midterm, but make it a take home midterm. Um, but uh, the point is you have this flexibility now to just change your syllabus and, and tell the students how grades will be assigned. And okay. Okay, well, um, unless there's any other questions, I guess I'll end the meeting and uh... Thank you very much, Sue, for everything. Oh, you're Thank welcome. Thank you, Sue. Thank you all for coming. Bye -bye. <laughs> you guys nice seeing everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.